It's January the 6th, 2024. This is the future of photography. The future of photography. I have to come up with a better intro. Hey, how's everyone doing? <laughs> What's wrong with right. that? It's not like we're, we're going to change the name of the podcast or something. What's no. wrong with saying, hi, this is us? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It kind of gets kind of boring. I, I try to give it a bit of a different emphasis get, here and there. Yeah, anyway. Maybe get Taylor Swift to write the theme. and. Oh, yeah. That yeah. would be it. I on, on, the, on tips from the top floor, I had uh, uh, for a few years, I had people send in intros like this is such and such and you're listening to blah, blah, radio oh, yeah, station sure. style uh we should yeah, if you're listening to this send in it's like in tv intro. we always get the cast to do previously on yeah <laughs> and previously oh no we went not... <laughs> too much anyway. work <laughs> too much work. anyway for those that of be, you who are interested editing, in photography yeah. rather than our banter um, it, yeah we're photography do something fun this is courtesy of adrian who is uh, themed us with mashups? Well, a VCR toaster in the title. So, what, yeah, what VC- so that, that was it, th- that. Would th- so the VCR toaster is actually a thing, right? There's a link in the show notes, and you can go and make one. You obviously need a donor toaster, and you need a donor VCR, um, and uh, you can make the thing. Uh, you can make it so that the toast comes out of the slot on the VCR. Um, so that's the thing. It's a oh, reference it, back oh. to it's a reference back to the young ones, which for those that enjoyed nineteen eighties British alternative comedy. Um, and just seeing this for the first time, it actually uh, toasts the 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 letters VHS into the toast. Um, I don't know if that's real or not, but it does toast the. It, it's actually a VCR that shall you, we, you put, sh- you put your bread in the VCR the, and it'll toast. Should we just call us a a. a DIY um, for people who have far too much time on their hands. Well, it sounds it sounds more like like a yep. like a silly silly version of that, right? It does. Or, yeah, no, that that one is. Or is it going to be spot. serious? Uh, well, so so not all of these are going to be serious. No, this is supposed to be a fun show, right? Oh, I got some so. serious things that I. Oh, want well, to serious mash is good up. too. Serious, serious, yeah. yeah well, let, all right, let's, let's, all, let's sprinkle all, it about. Everything goes okay. Good. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, this, I've oriented weirdly towards photography. <laughs> I'll never catch on on what this podcast. Concept. This is an AI podcast, <laughs> and, surely. And, and uh, you know, a smattering of AI in here, just because of the drinking game that I'm. Okay. Sure All right. Well, I'm going to claim pole position, right? I'm going to go first because uh, okay. uh, you have the most. I, you have the most mashups got, there was, anyway. There was well, there was. I have the, the most mashups, but the, this this in part stems from a, a thing I put in our. An idea I had, I think yesterday or the day before yesterday, that I popped into our Discord just to see what people had, and uh, I was uh, I was shooting a lot over the the winter holiday break with Hipstamatic, uh, an app that we all know and love, been around for ever since twenty ten, I think. Yeah, um, and uh, it's one of my go to apps when I want to shoot fun, colourful stuff, right? But as I'm sure we will all agree, um, the various different iterations of of user interface over the decade, last decade and a half have been fair to middling at best, but mostly just downright appalling. And they've just done another user interface uh, change, which is similarly impenetrable. Um, and so I thought, you know what, actually, let's 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 have a think about how we could improve this. But. I thought, well, you know, what if you could get that brilliant, lovely colour of the square photo with all the effects and things like that you shoot in Hipstamatic and you get something that was absolutely identical printed on a square Instax on your little Instax printer? What if there was a product masher? What if Fuji bought Hipstamatic, right? <laughs> and Fuji bought Hipstamatic and they and they, re, uh, they they put something in the background, some kind of um, color controlled workflow that was completely invisible to the user. Don't want to worry about that. That made sure that what you printed on your Instax Square was exactly the vibrant colors that you had on your script on your phone screen through shooting with Hipstamatic. That would be brilliant. Right. That would be brilliant. And then I had a second idea, which actually, do you know what? They need to buy another company as well. One that actually knows how to make phone apps with decently usable user interfaces, because <laughs> neither in, neither Fuji nor Hipstamatic have got any idea whatsoever of how to produce a UI. So 
so that was where this started so i want i want a seamless workflow from like my my fun shooting hipstamatic um you know through to a, a, an instax square i can have in my hand and there was like and there the concept of a, a podcast about product mashups was born well that's funny because i have an instax um mashup as well cool uh, you know right, go I, ahead go ahead and and it's kind of the opposite of yours which is i want an instax film that is a peel apart, but Ooh, okay. with the with the negative. We have positive. to explain peel apart for the younger audience, but uh, uh, used to be Polaroid made a film uh, that would actually uh, you would take the picture, pull it through two rollers on the camera, in the camera, that would release a chemical. That would develop the the photograph, and then you'd peel it apart from the kind of chemistry, and you'd have a absolutely beautiful first black and white. Then they went to color, and it had a very very lovely um, overall feel to it. Then they introduced a negative, so you would peel apart, wash the negative in a kind of a little bath of so so you have, you peel apart the positive from the negative you have negative. two things and as you, a result you would end up with both and the negatives were pretty good albeit very um a scratch oriented <laughs> because they were quite soft but there was a way to fix them and harden them and i i still have many in my hmm. archive that are as good as the day they were shot but okay so you you brings want... me to today you want Instax peel apart. I want Instax peel apart, but I want the peel apart to be such a high quality that I can actually contact print it as platinum. So I can <laughs> Okay. So I can literally go from an Instax print to a very relatively small platinum print that would be museum quality. That that's the kind of mashup ah, I'm okay. looking for. That does touch. I did have another idea related to Instax actually, which I th I, I didn't put in the list because I thought it was a bit unfair. But since you brought it up, um, uh, an Instax camera with a good lens. Ah, that would be a bit <laughs> shocking. shocking. Uh, I can't have a good lens. No, no, it's just that defeats the purpose. I I I, I, th yeah. I think the film is the problem, not the lens. <laughs> yeah. No, I have I have an I have a film one, a film based one as well. Um, I want reusable film. Oh, okay, you, go know, on. you know, I should I should film sometimes, and then I develop it, and I scan it, and then I, I typically I it typically dips over into the into the digital realm at one point, and then the film is just useless. So why not have film that has all the advantages of film, and then you can just I don't know dip it in a, in, in some liquid, know. and it goes back to being film, and you you. I think we have it. It's called digital. No, oh, no, no, no. The, 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 you know, the, the, the point of film or one point of film is that it's, it is this, you have to commit. It, when you shoot film, you have to commit to what you want to shoot, when you want to release the shutter, what, what, uh, what kind of an emulsion you use, how the, the, the look is, how the, how the contrasts are, if it's black and white or color. And that, that is, that is essential for film and digital doesn't do that so no but a repeatable film would give you uh, a reusable film well, it, it will, right? you still have to go through the motion and then you just instead of throwing it away or filing it away and it uses up all that space that you it, can it i introduce so an analogy like to what that may be kind of in the physical atomic universe do you remember um the when you were a child uh, that th there was a magnetic drawing thing it had a cardboard back a bunch of mm. magnetic filaments a magnetic pen and a plastic sheet and you would draw by pulling the little etch -a sketch it it was like an etch a sketch it was like an etch a sketch but, with, sketch. but with actual magnets oh. in it very, Never very powdery magnets you missed out but um and that that's what kind of contributed yeah. to your urge to be a photographer. So this is this me. is this is why I wanted to have this conversation with you guys because there's loads of ideas sparking now, right? So have you guys been tracking the development of analog computing, right? So uh, as, a, as opposed to digital uh, computing. You mean currently or currently in yeah, the olden yeah. days when no 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 the analog. current 
current research and development of of analog computing components. I know there is stuff going on, but I haven't really looked into it. So I'll try little, and find it. Little I'll try mice and find that run through tubes and like yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, ants, <laughs> lots and lots of ants. <laughs> Um, the, uh, no, the, I will, uh, I'll try and dig out a link, um, uh, and send it to you. But I was, I was watching this YouTube thing the other day and, uh, an interview with a, a company, an American company that is developing analog computing modules. Um, and the, the reason, um, it, they, they could be used a lot on sensors. And when I say sensors, I don't just mean camera sensors. I mean, anything that, ha- yeah, anything that is a sensor for an analog type signal. It could be a rain sensor. It could be a, you know, a motion sensor. It could be whatever. But they think that if they can get these things to work um, and the production price is down, production costs down, um, they'll be very, very much more energy efficient to run and cheaper to run because, of course, you don't need all of those digital to analog converters everywhere in your signal path. So, and they would be faster as well. And yeah. they would be so they would be faster. They would be more representative of the analog signals they're trying to track. And and yes, you'd still for 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 big data in the background in the cloud things you'd do. They they think you'd still call digitally or digital processors to do digital type work. But um, they're they're thinking that actually you know edge of network sensors that kind of thing analog computing could be yeah. something that is yeah less than ten years away. Um, Just one. So you could have it. an imagine having an analog electronic sensor it wouldn't be a digital camera because it's still analog but it would be an electronic analog sensor so for a camera if, if you look cool. at if you look at how a, a digital sensor works is that the first couple of stages in there are analog it collects photons it, uh, it converts them into a charge that is an analog process and then at one point there's a an ad converter that converts that to digital yes yeah, yeah. Are you saying that mm. everything around us starts as analog? <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> even, even the universe, even our waves are, in a way, well, some, analog, some people say we, we live in a simulation. So. That's mm. it. I, in Hollywood, there's no question about that. <laughs> other, pe- um, other, other, people say, other people say the particle takes every possible path to the destination until you look at it. That's, yes. yeah, now, now we're getting into anyway. into quantum physics. I, I have a, I have a, a, a camera mashup that I would like. Sure, um, go on. I, I would like, you know, how we have on on most modern digital cameras, we have APS-M aperture, shutter, you know, manual, etc. I want a night. I want night vision as one of the things on my dial. So <laughs> I want to be able to take pictures in, you know relatively pitch black environments just by turning my dial from you know aperture oriented okay <laughs> automatic to night vision and just without increasing the kind of size scope or or uh, price that's what i'd like okay how's that for a mashup is that, uh, is that is that doable because you can buy night vision goggles can't you right they, yeah, they do that conversion but, in real time but i don't know what kind of sensors but, they use they, well, they, the the thing is like real military grade night vision. Yeah. It's not a sensor. It's a it's an entirely different process. And it's a computer that enhances probably by not using really nowadays. No, no, it, it works. It works. It works in in a different way. I just I actually it, just okay. just a month ago I, I watched a video about this and the tech in there is mind blowing. Well, Chris, wouldn't you imagine that a camera could point at a subject? And uh, just by using LIDAR or, you know, some form of sure. bouncing, recreate the scene. <laughs> oh, sure. uh, I've got 100%. This is one of mine. This is one of mine. Well, right, the, here, here's the thing. We um, we have, um, while we're out there, there's, there's just new, new AI tech that has, or new algorithms that have been released that can now very reliably and very precisely create 3D from a 2D picture. That's right. I've, as in, I've been as, following in that as in the too, yes. as in the spokes on a bicycle wheel and yeah. uh, pre- precision, very very precise. Yeah, this and is so, so depth estimation, these kind of things. We will have cameras that shoot 3D with one single lens, without lidar, without anything. So but that okay, you, that 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 see, which, some which of this made stuff it is weird, hard it? for me to come up with things because we it there's is. there's so much awesome stuff out there already. It, it was really difficult to find things that would be. 
when I, I was know. thinking about my list, I found it was like, okay, so so most of my ideas were were roughly the equivalent of so strap a camera onto a thing. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and, you know what? I have an idea. I have an idea. How about a phone that is also a camera? <laughs> Great no, idea. that'll never catch on. Um, so, so I did have one that was to do with lidar and to do with uh, stuff like that. So, um, it was the idea of of taking a photo. Um, you could do it with a, a spherical camera or one of these things that Chris has just described, or the lidar unit in your phone, but have that then print direct to a three D printer. Right. So it's like your output would be a 3D print that you would have that, you know, the colors and things like that. Now, and, and any of us who've no, used these LIDARs know that what you get is, yes, you could, on the app on your screen, you can create a rough 3D layout of, let's say, a room that you're you're scanning or, or an object you're scanning. But it's always full of holes, right? There's no, you know, so you'd need a bunch of technology in the background there that would understand, first of all, how to fill in the gap so that you get a coherent picture. Secondly, it would need to also be able to turn that into something that was actually printable, right? It would need to put in all the strengthening struts and things like that. The and and yeah, you know, so because you, you can't print things that float in the air, yeah, you know, things like that. Everything has to be connected. So I thought that would be a really good t- thing, um, which possibly exists somewhere. But it, it would have to be a, a, a super fast 3D printer because just the thought of having uh, a, a, any average 3D printer today that takes like 12 hours uh, to print uh, something mean, of meaningful size. I, absolutely. So then I got, so I, and it, so I had another thought as I was, what happens if, right, it wasn't a 3D printer, it was a machine that could do origami, right? <laughs> And, so it and folds like, the 3D I've thing. taken a photograph of Jeremiah and it's in 3D and in five minutes I want my origami printer to to have folded me a uh, a, a paper sculpture of Jeremiah. So that Ouch. that Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't bend that easily. I, I I have a great mashup that I think all of us would really, really love. I would love um hardware software combination. Uh, to turn our Teslas into a camera. They already have eight cameras. <laughs> Five cameras on the LED. <laughs> to there fuse are them. Yes, to fuse them into a high-definition printable output that uses all the cameras, maybe add okay. more, yeah. uh, to create a large format image that we just kind of point our headlights <laughs> At or well, as, as the cameras go all around the car, you don't even have to point it. You just park it next to what you want to... Exactly what I'm talking about. And uh-huh. uh, I think that's very possible. We'll just get Elon to kind of put that into the engineering mode. And, you know, uh, you know, maybe a printer, your 3D printer in the frunk. And <laughs> there you are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I, I, have, I, have something, I have something a bit more practical because... Um, I, I was thinking, okay, how would I en- enhance a camera that, like a good camera, decent resolution, DSLR kind of, or, or mirrorless, uh, exchangeable lens. Uh, so I was looking at a, at a new lens that is that encompasses what I want in a lens, and that would be a, a very, very long zoom range, 24 to 600 would be kind of... Uh, in, a good one. I, I had a 35 to 350 once, which was kind of awesome. Pancake so talk, design? Uh, well, a flat lens design. Yeah. New meta materials. You yeah. you would have like mm-hmm. a, a this lens would be yeah. I don't know a quarter of an inch thick, and uh, it would, would have auto shift built in. So I want that. The 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 shifting is nice and good, but I was always dreaming of a camera that would like keep verticals vertical no matter where which way I tilted the camera just by default mechanical because i like that mm-hmm. aspect of it and mechan okay yeah All but right. yeah so, so it, and, and it's built into the camera so it's a, a lightweight flat 24 to 600 with a built-in auto shift do you know i do, I do say that my new camera does uh have has built-in tilt shift that you can just it, which is digital on. which bends pixels and yeah, reinvents yeah. new pixels i don't like yeah. that no no it's gotta be it's gotta be <laughs> mechanical so it, it does occur to me then actually there's a whole class of things here right because you've just described that chris if if the technology for night vision goggles right is different why would you you could build those into a lens can you you could have like a dslr lens yeah we yeah, had that, that you just got oh, i'm just gonna put my thing. nighttime lens on now and it has all of that technology built into the lens yeah and a sensor at the end of sony did these little barrel shaped cameras that you could 
hook up to your phone for a display and that did never catch on because yeah there was only one person i know that bought it the, the cam- I, I want to make the, yeah. the camera. You, you buy need all to, the cameras, Jeremiah. <laughs> the, you, need, you need to have a camera to hold, and it should be a camera. We we tried in the in the late nineties. We tried all these weird form factors for cameras, and none of that really caught on. And then they dropped it and made cameras, camera shaped no, 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 cameras no, no, again. I, but they, they, we could do. It. You could have it. So your your camera, right? Your 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 cannons that you shoot with. Chris, right? The, your DSLRs that you shoot with, would you just had a lens that had all of the night vision technology in it, right? So you were just using your normal camera, except at night you put a special lens on it. You know, and, and then it got you. Yeah, night oh, vision I can leave stuff. it on all the time. It should be built in, no dust, no nothing. And by oh, the way, okay. that camera should also be self charging. So you'd have self never, never changed, it, never swap the battery. It has, well, I don't know, high powered or little, a tiny little plutonium reactor or something in I like that. that. You, that say, you keeps... sound like a Toyota salesman at this point. All, all that, <laughs> they they that, invented that the they term self charging self-charging no, hybrids. No, yeah, no, it's got, the... it's got a little, a little uh, high, high, high efficiency solar cell on the shoulder, and a little, I don't know, it harvests air, it harvests energy a little from propeller the Wi-Fi. On the top and it, 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 it harvests Wi-Fi energy, that kind of thing. Yeah. As a sidebar, have you seen these recent articles about the highway designs that charge your electric car as you drive? Yeah, around? these these come up every three years, and then yeah, it, it, you can imagine what it does to the body. They had okay, so here in, here in Germany, they had an experiment. A Along some of the autobahns on the on the rightmost lane, mm-hmm. they had overhead wires like you see for trains, um, but for trucks, so mm-hmm. for for okay. semis. And uh, then they had a fleet of I don't know fifty of them that would drive onto the autobahn and then raise that contact thing mm-hmm. on the roof and like a trolley drive, bus, drive electric, yeah. like a trolley bus, drive electric. Um, that never went no, anywhere no and craft work didn't write a, another song about it either so <laughs> no. it's just no. not happening i, I have a, f- a fun uh, one that is a different um it's a classic mashup uh but it uses ai and imagery i i would like uh an ai which i i'm sure is coming up um that will generate music based on the input of an image well, okay and as one edits the image, the music would change. I am of the conviction that this is already out there. AI I, I kind of it feel does exist. it is. I think it I, does I exist. I feel it is in two-minute papers. <laughs> we should probably... No, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've actually seen something along those lines in the last... Well, six months somewhere. I have, in fact, used an alpha test of it probably a year ago, where I did input uh, an image and got a phrase or two out of it. But I'm talking about, you know, a symphony. A, yes, out of a kind of call it a a foggy forest, misty landscape. What would that provoke in terms of mood, and what would a kind of uh, you know, street photography, what what would that provoke? And I think the the um the kind of fusion of image and music has been happening for many years, really, since MTV in particular really drove that fusion. Um and 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 I think it's time for um something user friendly so that people who have a visual sensibility but know musical uh compositional techniques can actually start to compose music using imagery i think would so be interesting. we are so so we're looking at this is a, a picture would be a different kind of a prompt that would result in a yeah in music mm-hmm. and uh, the holy grail would then be to make it to to, to supply a picture that plays uh, a rick roll Never gonna Not. give you up. No, Rick. <laughs> no, just no. Rick, I, I, Rick Ast- Astley. Chris, uh, yeah, Rick Astley. Rick Astley actually hosted the New Year's Eve program on the BBC. I'm this not year. surprised. And the They're song they surprised. played at midnight was never gonna give you oh, up. Of course, yeah. he's leaning into it. I love that. Oh, he's he's made a whole <laughs> career out of it. Thirty-five years or more now, right? Anyway. <laughs> 
All right, back to back to right. Okay, so here's another one. Right, so um, I, I would like to have like a really small camera, like an Insta three sixty Go, right? Tiny little camera. Oh, I'd like that, you know, uh, mashed up with my Apple Watch, right, and a printer that you put in your local coffee shop. So when you go for a walk, you take loads of photos, uh, and and you don't have to carry anything heavy or anything like that if you don't want to. It could, or it could be any camera, but uh, and then it automatically sends uh, using your watch and a cellular connection in your watch, just because I'm playing here to the coffee shop. And then when you go to the, you get to the point in your uh, photo walk where you want to sit down and have a cup of coffee, and you get there and your prints are ready for you. Right, you just sit down, order a cup of coffee, and they bring along your prints and you know, along with your donut or whatever it is that you want to have. And, and then uh, you have to carry them home. <laughs> uh, no, no, well, that's no, no. Point. You attach it to a little we'll sort, drone. We'll, a little we'll drone something. lands on your table, we'll, and then we'll, you attach we'll sort, it. We we'll saw something out there, but then, and then I also had another idea that after three p.m., after three in the afternoon, um, it switches over to pub delivery rather than coffee shop delivery. Because <laughs> who goes on a coffee shop? Who goes to a coffee shop after three p.m. on a photo walk? Certainly not me. <laughs> uh, no, that's good. That's good. So, um, so sp speaking of, by the way, speaking of the Insta 360 Go, I was, this is not a mashup, it's more an improvement. Um, I was, I was hoping, because I've, I've seen reviews of it and it's kind of good, but the thing I don't really love about it is the audio. It's decent, but okay. it's not, not super good. So I want a camera, that form factor seems really interesting. Um, image quality, decent, but with with spectacular audio. Could we not clean that up these days? Because I was thinking yeah, about this no, the other day. It's, it's, it's you, just, you just need a work. Shot. It's a workflow yeah, issue rather than, yeah. Nah. Do you know, you know, at MIT, uh, about 10 years ago, um, they were experimenting, and I think it's out there as a product where you could aim a, micro uh, a, a speaker in a stadium at a person and have that um have that person basically it be the only person that listens That's to the already there yes yeah yeah, yeah. the okay. tech is out there like uh uh airy airy speaker kind of yeah system. I, and and so uh, with that in mind it would be very interesting to be able to record um audio <laughs> now we're getting into creepy spy stuff <laughs> <laughs> so if you point the camera at someone it will give you absolutely flawless audio recorded to whatever video yeah. or even that would be nice that would um, be nice I think that would be good. Um, so many cameras require the lavaliers or, you know, sync sound, all of that stuff. So even you, a want, sky truck. you want a high tech, super good shotgun mic, which. That's it. Yeah. Attached to the camera without. On a silent you know, drone. You, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, you, you just need one of these. I, I've, I've seen these on, on soccer fields where the oh, press the for a while, yeah. they, had, they had these, these par parabolic bowls with a microphone in and they would point it at the at the at the i don't know players cursing on the field or something and then they had to stop doing that because it, it was no good it wasn't it wasn't helpful <laughs> wasn't um, user friendly okay i have one more which uh, it's just a personal kind of thing i want a camera that is a uh, like a modern camera as a dslr or a uh, mirrorless camera or something but it should have the form factor the size and the weight of my Good old Minolta X seven hundred. Oh, okay. Because because th this is I, I grew up with these uh, with these film DSLRs that compared to what we have today are incredibly lightweight and easy to carry and just the the re because I grew up with these because I this is what I used for the longest time. I have them. I have the I have the motions in my in my spine embedded in my spine i don't have to think it just works my fingers do the man am i with job. you on that like uh, <clears throat> give me a camera with weight and analog i think feel so i never have to look up or look at a menu when i'm taking a picture yeah. uh that's what i want and um sadly that's what i have at great expense oh is it, is it, are you not yeah. talking about the nikon zf no, it's too heavy, too big, too bulky, too oh. no, not quite. No, the Leica Q series. I'm, is I'm not looking at at. That. I'm not looking at uh, at um, nostalgic 
look alike of a yeah, film yeah. camera. Oh, it's it's got to be. It's got to have the same exact feel and size, the weight, proportions. Yeah, proportions, everything. And then, and then make that for everyone, for everyone's youth camera. You know, everyone who grew up with a specific camera, make that into <laughs> a high tech beast that just feels like the old one. Yeah, you're start, starting to age yourself a little bit there, Chris, because most of the youth grew up with a phone in their hand, didn't they? So, oh, yeah. I'm an old fart. I, I'm I'm not denying that. No, no, okay, all right. So, go talking about the Leica Q3, Jeremiah. I had a mashup, a product mashup, Leica Q3, and a WeTransfer transfer subscription. Because those are some big files, right? And if you're going to send those across the internet, you need some dedicated file the, transfer systems. They're, they're very, very big files, I think close to 80. Um, and while you transfer the files, it plays music by Kraftwerk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> it's a German camera, you know? <laughs> There, yeah, there are more we, German we are bands than Kraftwerk. <laughs> Pretty sure that, that Germany, over the course of history, has produced one more than one band. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. But I, I, I have to say that, um, you know, I've been customizing the camera for my own use because it, you can customize it so precisely that with one thumb control basically everything you need to do while looking in the most spectacular viewfinder. I mean, just um, 120, I think, uh, frames per sec. At, um, that's the EV on it, you know, the exposure. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's really well thought out, and I can only imagine what the Q4 will be. <laughs> Don't <laughs> wish your life away. Up. You just got that one. But, no, I know. No, uh, but um, I'm very impressed, and I've I've tried to set it up for kind of regular shooting, for video shooting, and for black and white shooting, and just at the touch of a button, be able to kind of be Jacob J, JPEG oriented or DNG uh, oriented. I still would like one mode also that just uh, takes a picture and just uh, interpolates it into words. <laughs> Okay. That, that <laughs> isn't that isn't that, okay. That's that, that's already there. It's called clip in the in the models in the in the image models. Describe yeah, this. No, I have to go through. I have to go through. In other words, uh, what I'm talking about is embedded into the image as yeah. a complete description in words. Multilingual. Yeah. So in your metadata in EXIF data, you want that's your it. description. Uh, okay. Yeah. And, and that and that, yeah. and that way you are you are drastically increasing its uh, findability. Its online exactly my yeah. point. In yeah. other words, the searchability for an image is not purely digital. Yeah. I can go like you know misty forest in the rain, and I get just a a ton of those that i've taken if i've taken what, what if it what if you your camera became sarcastic though right so i'm thinking like or oh, marvin the paranoid android right what if we yeah what if it just said will you stop shooting seagulls please and look at something more interesting <laughs> right you could get all sorts of nonsense you can, embedded you can, so you want, you want a sentient... your limit your limit of seagull photographs yeah. has been you reached. want a please sentient delete. camera are you sure you want that yeah <laughs> What another but, manhole cover, honestly. <laughs> but you know, I say that I say this, you know, partially in mashup jest, but I think it would be incredibly useful instead of hashtagging whatnot, a description of what I'm shooting that is accurate, as accurate as any description from uh, Copilot, uh, Bing, uh, you know, Midjourney, etc., would really help. Uh, searching through the um, thousands of images that one collects over the course of, of years. Um, and I think that it just gives you a not only a description of the scene, but also the mood and the, uh, the kind of lighting conditions, uh, etc. So you, 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 you will no, no doubt both of you have read the Discworld novels by Terry Pratchett. Some of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some. So in the, I forget whether it's the original one or not, there is a character called Two Flower who is the Discworld's first tourist. And he has a little box he hangs around his neck. And inside there's a little gremlin and he actually paints pictures. You take the oh, lens yeah. cap off and he paints <laughs> pictures. And he gets very angry when you, you take pictures of the same things because he runs out of that color. That's your <laughs> sentient camera right there. I mean, I mean, just just sticking with Marvin, I I would just not like if my camera starts complaining about the pain in the diodes down the left Try side. Try hard, though. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> uh, 
All right, anyway. back to a, back. Here's here's one. Then this one this one was just a little bit. I was just starting to get silly by the end of my list here. So this is a trail carry. You know the sort of thing you leave in the mountains. It's camouflage and it's it, trapped to a tree. Yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. But I want that mashed up with a 3D Viewmaster. So you you know the the red thing that you hold to your face and click, and it has the circular film. So so you know so that you end up with yeah um, stereoscopic images of a mountain lion delivered to your <laughs> lodge in the mountains at breakfast time. I think you have to be forty five or up to know what a Viewmaster is. Yes, really? probably yes. Yeah. Uh, by but, the way, uh, I have a I have a old collection of Viewmasters in in a Bakelite Viewmaster wow. <laughs> thing. It yeah. uh, you know picked it up at some you know jumble sale somewhere. I had one as a kid. I think I had three or four discs with like Disney stuff on them. So yeah, they, 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 there was all of that. But uh, this came with you know I guess because you used to be able to take pictures and send them. To Viewmaster, and they would yeah. make your own. Did um, you? I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. I only ever knew them uh, uh, as as things where, yeah, like Disney things, you know, um, uh, or for stuff the kids, like yeah. That. yeah, yeah. But I think it'd be good to be. Yeah, I like the yeah you know, stereoscopic viewing, right? Uh, so I'd like the idea of having you know three dimensional yeah you know, stereo photographs that so you can actually you know, can actually see those and, and, and i know it's you know it, it's not very fashionable and i know that you know pretty much brian may from queen is the only person that really <laughs> takes you know, that, yeah that invests in this stuff these days but nonetheless i i there's, there is something very special about stereoscopic imagery so. well of course the new iphones i don't have one, but I, I heard uh, again, the, again, the, the, they're not for not far in the future. Our cameras will just from a one lens picture be able to make sure. that three D. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I, I have another mm. idea. How about a watch that is also a wristwatch that's also a walkie-talkie? <laughs> ah, damn it! Again, I'm I'm wearing one, and I'm sure you guys are wearing one. The Jeremiah will be wearing his. I'm sure. Yeah, Chris has got these. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, we're we're so. Uniform. Yeah, I tell you what, I did though. So I did have a think about this because, like, one of the problems you've got with uh, with making phone calls on a watch, right? The whole Dick Tracy I never thing. Do. Is, yeah, um, I had one come the other day. I was driving and I'd been out in my car and I didn't take my phone with me and I was running the car off the um, off the app on the on the watch, right? Um, uh, and. Uh, a phone call came in and of course my watch hadn't Bluetooth to the speaker. So I just sit, sitting there in my car, driving along, talking into, talking into my watch. Um, but I thought, do you know what the, the, the issue there is, is right. You can use your AirPods and that's fine. Right? This is first world problems in the extreme, isn't it? But then you, you know, what I'd love is a better quality mic microphone or, you know, or something like that. But the thing is, cause the microphones are by your ears instead of by your mouth. It's difficult to get good sound. Out. I'm just, I'm just trying to imagine, take, take the last one minute of what was said on this show and transplant it back to like yeah, 19, 1990. And you would, you would, you would have probably ended up in a, in a madhouse. Yeah. So I still carry around when I, when I'm out and about for work, I still carry around um, wired phone headphones as well as my airpods it's very hard Be to plug into your watch though <laughs> yeah it is yeah you can't plug it into the watch sadly you can do it once but it yeah, won't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the because because exactly that so if you get a phone call on the train like a business call you can't shout loud enough that your airpods <laughs> can pick it up you have to have a microphone right by your mouth so so i take i carry the wired headphones just so i don't yeah just so you can have a quiet personal call for more first than any first world things i've i've just speaking speaking of shouting you know into a watch i've just just today saw a a, a picture of the russian uh, equivalent to the concord airplane as an uh, oh, okay. sonic uh, airplane and apparently it was so loud that if you wanted to talk to your to, to the person next to you, right next to you, you had to shout, and the person two yeah, seats was over, like that. you wouldn't be able to. When hear I was a them. kid, I lived in on the landing path for Concord oh um, at the at the test site. Um, oh my in, god! Which is in a place called Filton on the outskirts of Bristol in the west of England, where Rolls Royce built the engines, yeah. and a lot of Concord was developed. Um, and we lived a couple of miles away from there. Um, and they used to, the other thing they used to do is they used to test the Concorde engines on Vulcan airframes. So the, the, the World War II, well, no, sorry, not really World War II, um, 1950s and 60s 
um, you know, sort of a um, delta wing bomber, massive delta wing bomber. Um, they used to strap these Concorde engines to this airframe and test it. And it used to come over the hatch. It scared me silly when I was a little. And, um, and it used to rattle the windows. Uh, and also, you know, proper, like, to, you know, to, do you think they'd like rattle out of their frames and smash and stuff like that? Very, very loud That's indeed. The Concorde. reason that Concorde was not able to fly across the United States, even at 60,000 Oh, yeah, not over land. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, land, over yeah. land. Um, no, and, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I was and lucky my brother, when my I... brother used to live in Reading, which is mm. a town in yeah, England, know. which is maybe 15 miles west of Heathrow Airport. And you could set your clock by Concorde because when it took off, it flew over to, and, and, and you, you, you were like, okay, that's the morning Concorde because you could hit, it didn't matter where you were, what be, you'd be six levels underground. You could still hear Concorde fly. Last over. year in summer, um, the entire north of Germany heard two loud, massive ultrasonic booms. And I, have, I haven't heard one in ages because back as a child, we used to be live in an area where the, the military would train and mm. they would we'd have ultrasonic booms like once a week. And uh, last summer, apparently some airplane lost its communication, so they didn't respond to requests and then they thought it was something terrorist and they sent out uh, two fighter jets to 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 intercept to intercept nothing happened they they managed to make themselves very clear that the plane should land and something it was anyway two two ultrasonic booms yeah that was a memory from many years ago you know, i don't think i've ever heard an ultras i don't think i've ever heard that you know it's, it, i when i was a uh, commercial director i you know i had the opportunity uh, because I had some clients in in London who, and I was living in New York, they would fly me over for a day mm. on not the Concorde, but Concorde. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, thank you for flying flying Concorde. Um, <sighs> and uh, dead quiet inside because. Obviously, you're ahead of the boom. So you're ahead of the noise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Do we have any mashups left? Uh, no, nah, nothing. Nothing as good right. as Concord. <laughs> Let's move on to the Pick. picks of the week. We have three. One is artistic, and two are well, kind of artistic. Um, let's start with the very artistic one by Jeremiah. F photo. What is that? It's just a a, a spectacular um, sight. Again, to explore um, photographers, photography um, styles of extremely high quality from all over the place. And it's just an a inspirational and uh, wonderful site. That oh, you can, you can buy them as well. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a bargain. Bargain. <laughs> it's just a lovely way to see what's going on photographically. I, like I always like that. Um, that is a little bit of a step up from just snappy snaps. Yeah. Um, all, all manner of, from very contemporary to classics, uh, just worth bookmarking and um, checking out. Yep. I like it. I like definitely, it definitely. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's. I I have to say, I, I would very much love to be yeah you know, uh, in possession of a whole bunch of of internet links to go and appreciate fine photography, right? As as, as opposed There's to one. You, yeah. All so, right. Uh, okay, I have to find that then. Adrian, you brought us a racing video. I did. I don't know where this came, how this came up in my my feed the other day. So this is called Marbula One, right? And it's called Marbula One because it's a mashup of Formula One and marbles. And marbles. <laughs> I've seen <Right>? this, Adrian. <laughs> and I, I, I did wonder whether you'd have seen it because I know you're a I Formula have. One they fan. They are I, oddly I, I, satisfying to watch. I think I spent in total maybe half an hour on these kind of videos. But it's, oh hell yeah, they're Absolutely. really good. Really good. So so this is a whole se season of, uh, uh, of and and they don't just post the race videos, right? They post the qualifying sessions as well. <laughs> yes. 
and and so they build these different marble run tracks and they are built in it beautifully um and they are they're set up like race tracks so they have red and white curbs and they have grandstands and stuff like that and you do lap after lap after lap and you might think to yourself actually if this is a marble run how do you do lap after lap after lap well it's because they have an automated um a, a, a escalator essentially so the marbles get to the to put the end of the lap and then they get up on this um conveyor belt up to the top of the uh, end of the so they can do a second lap and before and you have. know it you you start cheering for a specific marble <laughs> you do it's totally it's, it's really addictive and they have like like they do on the formula one on the tv they have down the side of the screen they have all the positions and and of what marbles and what teams they're in and 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 the commentator is is exactly like a, a proper motor racing commentator it's all full of stories about the teams and stuff like that and well what we and let's clear what we're watching is marble runs but the mashup with Formula One is just awesome. I and you're right, Chris, totally, totally, you, you, you're like, come on, come on, go, you can do it. You <laughs> it's can do very it. immersive. You, you, I, I tend to get stuck at these things, which is why I then turn them off because I know otherwise I'm, I'm losing an hour or two out of my day. It's yes, wild. You have to okay. be careful. I brought marbles too because when I saw your pick, I thought, I thought, yeah, I should probably do something marble related as well. This is a guy called Ivan Miranda. He is... I think Spanish and he um, builds things and what he's doing here with marbles is he's building a clock and it is it's just, it's it's a 3D printed and uh, aluminum profiles and mo motors and uh, uh, channels that marbles go into and then uh, a conveyor belt and what this clock does is well once it's finished it will create the time like a digital phase out of marbles black and white marbles and it, it takes like it initially i think five minutes to build to set up one time and it's 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 a very interesting process and he, he, keep, he keeps showing the progress and i think it's a five-part thing so um i'm i'm gonna link in the show notes we're gonna link the first part of it and uh he so when you say it creates a time, are you saying that the marbles then become effectively pixels in a display yes, exactly. so you can read the time based exactly. upon the position of the marbles in the frame? That is exactly it. And uh, it's, nice. it's, it's such an interesting uh, Rube Goldberg kind of thing that, yeah, you, you've got to watch it if, you, if you're into making and if you're, in, if you're into marbles. That's, that's a perfect thing. I watched all five. And it ends after the fifth one because he solves all the problems. This thing is incredibly loud and cumbersome, and uh, yeah, it's fun. Now, if if you if you took that design, increased the, I guess the diameter of the glass balls, and made it into a massive work of art on the side of a wall. Yeah, it would, that be, would it, be. Just imagine that being well. If if you watch a video, you will notice how loud this thing is. So it would need to be in a soundproof plexiglass. Yeah, no, yes, yeah, se sealed, or something. sealed. Yeah. But uh, I could imagine that it's a it's a, it's a work of, of art. Lobby. It is a work yeah, of art. Yes, it totally is. So there we go. Nothing to do with photography, but hey, who cares? <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, the end is near. I think we're done then, are we? I yeah. think we are. I think we I've are. Had a we lot of, I've had a lot of fun today. Thank you both. Well, yeah, it was it was real fun. Was we meshed the things up. Goofy way to and, kick well, the year off. Let, yeah. Let's say, anyone who listens, if you have interesting, weird mashups... Send it off uh, to our Discord. Let, come come join our Discord, tfttf.com slash join tfop. It's on the screen. It's in the show notes. Uh, we'll be happy to discuss interesting mashups maybe someone will come up with a business idea there and then be rich <laughs> and famous and so on anyway we are at thefuturephotography.com and on our discord and we're looking forward to seeing you we'll be back soon with more until then everyone take care and bye 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 you've been listening to the future of photography Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Hold up. 